Good Saturday morning and welcome back to Scale Auto Guys Workbench. Today we're working on this MPC 71 Dodge Demon. This is a pretty popular kit. A lot of guys have been pining for this one and here it is. Now I've had this one a couple of weeks and I had uh, a few cars that were already in the line to, uh, in various stages of being built and this one here finally had its time. So let's take a look at the box here. Uh, this is a two-in-one kit. You can build it uh, stock or drag. It comes with the, your uh, stock wheels or Krager Super Sports. And uh, here's the race version of it. Gives you uh, hood scoops and rear spoiler pretty good sized uh, decal sheet and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit this kit consists of 91 parts and here's what they look like on the back of the box so let's take a look at the body now on first glance this body looks pretty crisp and clean there are a couple of sharp edges up here that need to be kind of sanded down a little bit it's not real bad but it's just enough to paint will hang out on that little ledge there it just needs to be kind of taken down a little bit there is a swirl mark here in the body but that's the only one I see oh no wait there's one across the roof that's totally normal but it's just something to be aware of um, like I've said in previous videos with those swirl marks sometimes if you don't address those uh, at the first stages of you know when you put your primer coats on and stuff if you do anything metallic for whatever reason you know it doesn't feel like there's a low spot there but the metallic paint will migrate to that line and then you'll have a dark line in your paint and the rest of it will look fine so that needs to be addressed when you when you do your primer coats and uh, that's something I'll have to look for. Next up is your chassis. Now, there's a lot of extra pieces on that. You know, it's the sprue that come off the tree. Now, from what I've uh, discovered, uh, that is a sticking point with this particular kit um, that some guys are kind of upset with is the molded in drive shaft and the torsion bars that go to nowhere and the lack of detail on the inner fender wells um, I agree with them however I'm not going to take extensive steps like some of these guys have done and change out the chassis and do all kinds of craziness I'm just going to build it box stock the way it is the way I always do and I'm sorry if that upsets some guys, but I build box stock. I don't really do anything real elaborate. Oh, I might add a few things here and subtract a few things there, but I basically build box stock. So next up is your first tree here. It's got your uh, wheel backs, air cleaner, and some engine parts, stock steering wheel. next tree whoops there's a tree inside of a tree is your stock hood now that does have uh, indents for holes that you need to drill out to, if you're going to use the hood scoops it's your grill hmm Usually the grills are in chrome. This one gives you an opportunity though to kind of paint it in and dress it up a little bit. Here's the rest of your interior. One piece tub. Smooth on the bottom, smooth on your package shelf. And uh, yeah, here's another sticking point. Some guys complain about the seats and the way the seat backs are designed. Um, again, that's fine with me. I'm going to be building this box stock. 
Here's the uh, remainder of the engine parts. Here's your uh, hood scoops, the rear spoiler, seat backs, and part of your exhaust system here. Here's your weird looking rear axle. <laughs> it it does have it, you know some extra sprue on there, but it's not fully enclosed. That's all right. That's all right. On this tree here, looks like it comes with a roll bar. Your engine has another sticking point that I uh, heard was the firewall um, and its lackluster design. I can deal with that. I don't have a problem with it at all. Next up is your chrome tree. And here's the uh, two sets of wheels you get, the Traeger mags or the stock rally wheels. Front and rear bumpers. Here's the glass. Now it gives you red tail lights and your clears for your reverse lights. Those are kind of cool uh, that they give you two different ones. You don't have to paint anything. That works for me. Separate windshield and back glass. It has holes in that, so that means... Let's take a look. Yes, it has the alignment pins in the roof for the glass, so there's no guesswork to where that windshield goes. You put it on the pins. You zap it in there with a little bit of Mod Podge glue or canopy glue or whatever you your glue of choice is for doing automotive glass and you're good to go gives you one steel axle gives you six tires all pad printed firestones they're hollow and soft squishy um, this the slicks are not hollow they're kind of they're solid but they're also pad printed Firestone Drag 500s if you choose to use those. Next up is your decal sheet. Let me get this. Uh, here we go. Gives your hood decal, some side stripes, sponsor logos. Uh, two different license plates, California and Michigan. Dodge Demon logos. Your uh, air cleaner decal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it even gives you dash decals, which I really like. I hate trying to paint in your uh, gauges and stuff there. They can be challenging. It's not that I, you know, can't do it. It's just challenging <laughs> okay I'm gonna set this here last but not least is the instruction sheet in typical MPC fashion uh, big pictures easy to understand it even gives you decal placement uh, guide I guess you could say so there you go there's not a whole lot of cleanup to do on this kit it's mostly uh, just get some sub assemblies done and uh, there is, like I said, there is a little bit, but not, not a whole bunch of cleanup to do. And we'll head over to the booth. We'll get some primer laid down. I am going to try a new color. And I don't know if this will work or not. I don't know if this is close to the um, 
what would they call that? I forget the color uh, color name, but I'm going to try this uh, gloss hot pink. Isn't that kind of like the I forget what Chrysler called it for '71. I, I, the only thing that's coming to mind is pink passion, and I I know that's not it. Panther pink. I just I don't know. I don't. I'll have to look that up. I'll put it on the uh, the bottom of the screen here somewhere. Um, but I'm thinking about going with this and maybe some uh, because this is not metallic. I'm thinking about uh, doing a gloss coat with uh, mica pearl powder mixed in to give it kind of a little bit of a metallic kick and uh, let's see how it works out um, so let's get started
right, fellas. I put two coats of paint on this chat uh, interior tub. Sorry, interior tub, and just can't cover up those swirl marks. No matter what I do, so. guys know what this is right it's black felt it's a little on the thick side but if I put it in there just right it won't interfere with the glass or anything like that and it'll be kind of reminiscent of a 70s car um, I know back in the 70s when I had my car I had well, my car was brown, metallic brown with a white top. And to accent it, I guess you could say, I got this furry material. It was, uh, the fur was about maybe uh, half an inch long. And I got enough to cover the back dash area of my car. And then I put my stereo speakers on top of it. Uh, the speaker covers, I should say. And uh, that kind of kicked off that package shelf really well. Um, so, I don't have speaker grills for this. But, I do have this black felt. Let me get a piece cut out into this uh, shape here. And, I'll get it put in. I'll be right back. All right, I got that piece cut out. I just got to tack it down with a little bit of Mod Podge. Once that uh, glue is set up, I'm going to come in here and try to shape this a little bit better, uh, especially back here, because that will probably interfere with the body or the windows in some form. But if I can bevel this down a little bit back here that'll work and I think it looks pretty sharp I know it's black and it just blends in with the rest of the interior but it serves a couple of purposes here one it covers up that swirl mark um, and secondly it gives it a little bit of a hint of nostalgia if you will now, I don't know that everybody um, did this. I did it, and a couple of my friends did the same kind of thing. Uh, put furry carpeting or furry material in the back. Um, just, just for the heck of it. And uh, we were teenagers. It, it didn't matter. So, again, let me get this tacked down with some Mod Podge and... And we can go on to uh, installing this onto the chassis, which I have about halfway done. I'm really kind of waiting um, to get the engine completed because I had a mistake. I made a mistake uh, with the engine. And I'm in the process of correcting that, but uh, I'm having to wait for paint to dry. So... That was the mistake. I painted it the wrong color. <laughs> well, in my research, to be fair, uh, in my research online, I noticed that some of the engines were painted that Chrysler blue, uh, that weird kind of greenish blue color that Chrysler used back in the 70s. And some of them were painted orange. Well, when I dug a little bit deeper... These demons came with a, a host of different engines. So the 318s and smaller were usually the blue. The 340 was most generally always orange. So that's where I made my mistake. Um, now, I haven't seen any official releases from Chrysler on their engine colors for the demon. But through looking at Google, you know, 
71 Dodge Demon images and I looked through probably three or four dozen of them to just kind of get a feel for what this car should look like. Um, that's where I came up with the engine colors and that's where I made my mistake. So I'm waiting for the orange paint to dry right now and then I can do the final assemblies on the engine. We can move on to getting everything assembled on the chassis. All right, fellas. Um, when I'm, I went to go put on the rear axle, uh, I noticed that there's a few holes that needed to be drilled out, mainly because I think they left them filled in because of the drag version. If you're going to be putting the stock mufflers and exhaust system on, you need to drill those holes out. And let me show you which ones I'm talking about. It'd be hard to see them from this side, but this one, this one, this one, and this one are already drilled out for the springs. But there's two for the mufflers, one here and here. Your tailpipes here and here need to be drilled out as well as the two up here forward so that when you go to put your forward pipes in these pins will line up so don't forget about doing that when you go to put yours in uh, I just kind of stumbled upon it and I went wait a minute these are supposed to sit down a little bit better and then I rolled it over and I noticed that there was two indentations or just two little indentations there and you just need to take a you know you can take the tip of your number 11 blade if you don't have a a pin vise drill um, I happen to have one and uh, I drilled those out so just a little heads up on that also on the real car the exhaust tips are chrome of course these are molded in with the pipes I made them chrome by using just a little bit of bare metal foil on each one and that brought out the chrome now I will be painting in the the openings back here with some black paint at a later moment but let's continue on with this uh, chassis build
All right, fellas, let me jump in here real quick. Show you what I've got going on. As you can see, I have the engine and tires and everything mounted. And I have to say, I am not a big fan of the suspension on this car. Um, the front suspension is pretty easy. It's just a little block in the pin and you just glue it into the thing, uh, into the wheel well. The rear suspension, however, has got the same little blocks, but they don't go all the way to the top inside the wheel well. And if you put them down into the axle, then it just barely holds on at the top. So I've got I've got the axle and, and everything in there, and obviously have the tires on there. When I first put it on, the tires were really far forward, so I had to kind of pull it back and down. And now I'm just kind of going to let it sit like this and let the weight of the tires pull that block down until the cement cures. Um, it's kind of a, a goofy way to do it. I don't know why they just didn't make that a... Um, a solid through axle and you could just put the metal axle through and you wouldn't have to worry about alignment in the wheel well kind of situations but that's that's the design of the thing <laughs> um, I know there's been a lot of discussion about this particular kit and how they didn't do certain things right and I can see those things now that I'm putting this together um, things like it's not the correct uh, inner fender wells and and things like that I can see that now but I'm still gonna continue on building this box stock because that's that's my style I just build box stock whatever comes in that little cardboard box that's how it goes together um, I try to make it as accurate as I can but I'm not gonna involve myself in multiple hours of extra added work and then hunting down the correct parts to correct the deficiencies in it I'm just gonna build it the way it is so um, if you are of the mind that you want to correct all those issues by all means go ahead I full-on support you on that but I just uh, I just want to build this box stock and show you how it goes together like I said, the the blocks, I'll show you in the uh, in on the direction sheet. These little blocks right here. Now they attach to the frame rail on each side, but that little tab is not long enough to reach between the where it seats on the on the axle and where it attaches to the frame. So. Um, what I did by putting the axle and everything through that ensured that I had everything aligned um, I would not recommend just gluing those blocks in there and then eventually getting to you know putting the axle and tires on um, because you might find out too late that it's not aligned correctly so I would recommend highly put the tire on the axle and put the axle through uh, just to make sure everything is is lined up other than that it's uh, it's a pretty basic simple design and um, you know they could have made it a lot more complicated but they didn't the front suspension is so basic, it's not even funny. Um, usually they have a little bit more elaborate cross member. But with this one here, it's just got the block. You put the pin in through the back side, and you glue the block to the inner fender well. Um, the tires just slip on that pin pretty easy. Now, if you don't want your tires to uh, roll, glue that pin in. I'm not telling you to glue it in that's just a suggestion if you want your tires to roll do not glue that pin in um, and then when you 
attach the tire to the pin or the wheel to the pin I should say just put a little tiny dab of glue on the end of that pin just a little tiny dab and then slip your wheel over it otherwise if you want it to roll and you put a big glob of glue in there it's not going to roll because the back side of that wheel will attach itself to that block and the wheels will not roll of course most of you guys already know that but just for the sake of people that are first timers or whatever um, I'm just giving you a few suggestions you don't have to follow them but um, yeah so I've got that all just about done I just gotta put the traction bars on uh, I know it's a drag option but I've seen plenty of street cars with those on when I was a teenager so that's what we're gonna do um, I still have to put the radiator support wall in there and uh, a few other little oddities um, and I'll get to that in a minute I've got the interior done so that was the previous step um, and then we're just on to the two final steps well three final steps actually and um, yeah there we go now I seen pictures um, like I told you earlier I I do a lot of research when I'm building I saw a car uh, through a Google search that had these stripes on it but it also had the hood scoops so um, I, I also came across a lot that did not have any stripes on the hood whatsoever I also came across some that did not have the body side stripe um, I'm thinking about going with the body side stripe I'm not totally convinced that I want to go with the hood decal yet um, I don't know uh, I have to wait and see when I get to that step see how I feel about it but in the meantime I'm gonna get this finished up and uh, and we'll be on with the rest of it Welcome to the final on this 1971 Dodge Demon 340 by MPC. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I wanted to go with the uh, Krylon Gloss Hot Pink. I think that would have uh, looked pretty good. You know, that would have been kind of like uh, Moulin Rouge or maybe a Panther Pink or pretty close to it. But at the last second, I changed my mind. I decided to go with this uh, craft paint called Aquamarine. And I think it turned out a lot better in this color than it would have in the pink. Although, I think the pink would have been a good color as well. The uh, long stripes on, on the side really go together well. Uh, with that paint color as well I think it would look just as good again with the pink um, I don't know what it is with the pink it, it was kind of screaming at me um, but during my research I found out that uh, there was only one year that Dodge actually used the pink color on on any of the muscle cars of the era and it was discontinued because of its lack of popularity who knew <laughs> so overall this was a pretty decent build even with its shortcomings in the front fender 
uh, inner fender wells and the suspension situation. Uh, really the only thing that I think that round two could have done better uh, other than that is with that grill in the front end. It's, uh, I don't know, I, I think it could have been maybe done in chrome. Maybe, I don't know, on the original car it was kind of silver painted. It wasn't a chrome grill, but it did have chrome accents. And without like a Molotow pen, that would have been uh, that would have been easier to do with a Molotow pen than without. But I did okay. Also, the uh, pad printed tires and the Krager Super Sports really set the look off really well. Although I think it would have looked just as good with the uh, stock rally wheels, but. I'm partial to the Krager Super Sports. I don't really have much to complain about with this kit. After all, it did have just minimal flash, and that saved me a ton of time when it came to, you know, knocking out this build. Is there room for improvement? Well, yes, there's always room for improvement. I would be lying that I said if I said that there wasn't. Uh, then again, there's always room for improvement on every build that we do. It's up to us as builders to decide what those improvements should be and then act them out. I'd like to thank all of you for being patient during this time. Uh, I've been away from the channel for a month or five weeks something like that uh, and it's it's due to multiple family tragedies um, I've never heard of a family having three deaths when within a seven week period um, and that kind of hit us kind of hard so I've been away from the channel for a while I'm back now everything for the time being has settled out really well and hopefully we won't have any more uh, things like that happen uh, for a, a while. Uh, <laughs> well, all I can say is this build is done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. It helps the YouTube algorithm to share my content, which helps my channel grow. If you have any questions or comments, please write those in the comments section below, and I'll be happy to respond as soon as possible. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, or you can drop me a line at scaleautoguy at gmail.com. If you want more videos like this one, Make sure to hit that subscribe button below and make sure hit, to hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching Scale Auto Guys Workbench and I'll see you on the next build.